come in the yeah. last two days. It's been awesome. And I understand Joe Peretti is sending something to eat by FedEx. Should be here arriving in the next couple of minutes. Joe, what would that be? Gobble <laughs> <laughs> ghoul. Gobble ghoul. Oh, right. <laughs> come on, Joe. I'm disappointed. I was anticipating it to provide big time. I, I'm gaining weight just watching you guys eat food. Goodness oh gracious. My. <laughs> hey, make sure you check out that movie on Netflix, The Feast of the Seven Fishes. Now, uh, uh, Jeff Haddix pointed out to me that he had brought this to my attention a couple of years ago, and I'd forgotten about it until it was re-brought to my attention by Julie Abel this week, and I went and, and watched it. Did you watch? I did. And uh -huh. it's, it's filmed in uh, Rivesville, Fairmont? right or outside of Fairmont, okay. Rivesville, yeah. And uh, there's even a, a Fairmont Town sign in there that they, they drive to at one point along the way. I've got to watch because I've had a couple people say something to me yeah. as well. And we sort of grew up in that. Yes. That I, um, I very much culture. enjoy the uncles scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Us uncles. The, the uncles scenes were, were quite extraordinary. Uh, but I, I do disagree with the one part. If you're going to get this right, you got to get it all the way right. They have an Italian grandmother. And when she, she called the one person an SOB, and she didn't say it the way an Italian grandmother would say it, <laughs> you know, so it, it, it would be. And, and I, I think I can I, say this yeah, because you can. it's going to be it'll be mm -hmm. it'll be mangled uh, Italian uh, Sicilian dialect Englishese. Somebody be Chabasta, right? <laughs> so because they, they go hand in hand, but they don't the, the, it, the son of become some. Yeah, S -S and my Sumna. grandpap who lived next door, Eastern European, Yugoslavia, yeah. his was some of bitch. Yeah. Some of bitch. <laughs> so I was like, "What are you yeah. saying, Grandpa?" Oh, okay, I got it now. See, the, the, the we M miss you, Joe. The M. <laughs> so she she was too her her diction was too good, and then I looked up the actress, and she's not Italian, so that made sense. There you go, uh, Joe. The uh, state uh, Supreme Court in Colorado ruled yesterday that Donald Trump could be excluded from the ballot there. However, they have put a stay on this to give him an opportunity to appeal to the Supreme Court before. The actual uh, vote takes place in Colorado. Uh, you've read this decision. What can you tell us? Well, and, and I, Rob, as they often do when these kind of momentous decisions come out, I go immediately to the dissents because this unquestionably is going to be appealed mm -hmm. and will be done quickly uh, before that January 4th uh, stay expires. So, and, and that date is significant because on January 5 is when the uh, Colorado elections folks print the ballots so they have to know whether or not to include donald trump's name on that ballot so that that date is, is significant and you can bet an appeal will be filed but the dissents in the case two arguments are raised in the dissents number one is that the uh the supreme court justices in colorado focused on whether state law permitted this kind of challenge and of course the uh, supreme court decided it did uh, the dissents say that they misinterpreted state law. I will tell you that the U.S. Supreme Court, for a, a very long time, avoids getting into any arguments over the interpretation of state law. They typically and traditionally leave that to the state courts to decide how state law operates. So those dissents will not have any impact, I believe, on the U.S. Supreme Court's decision about what to do here. The second argument raised by the dissenting justices was that Trump was not given due process. And here I think the door is uh, at least slightly ajar, if not open, for the U.S. Supreme Court to look closely at the process, the, the uh, hearing that was actually held back in October, uh, where evidence was presented by both uh, the uh, attorneys representing Trump and the attorneys representing the petitioners seeking disqualification. I think the Supreme Court will look very closely at that process and probably ultimately will decide that uh, this was not sufficient due process to strike Donald Trump's name from the ballot. When I first heard this decision yesterday, I was talking with my wife about it. I said the Supreme Court will overturn this. Bill? Yeah, I was struck by the fact that Lawrence Tribe, who uh, is at least publicly acknowledged as being a constitutional expert, uh, felt that the Colorado Supreme Court made the right decision. Under the law, it's uh, you can make that case very easily. If you, if you look at Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, it's very clear in plain language that if you've engaged in activity that would be considered an insurrection or rebellion against our government, you are disqualified. 
So if you if you just look at the plain language bill, uh, yeah, you can see a lot of scholars coming forward and saying this is the right decision. Is it the right decision for the country politically? That's the real question, and I think that's where the U.S. Supreme Court will get a little weak in the knees here. Uh, it's a conservative court. They often uh, decide cases based upon strict interpretation of the language. But here you have to imagine they would be concerned about other states jumping in and creating a free-for-all as to who's qualified and who's not to run for president. Yeah, I think the point you just made is an important point, Joe. Uh, the impact will have on other states. Uh, Colorado has 11 electoral votes. In all probability, it will go Democrat. Uh, so as far as tur uh, uh, turning the election one way or the other is uh, uh, is is not the issue. The issue, I think, is the what other states will do. Maria? Yeah, and the other, there's a couple of states who have, uh, who have actually looked at this already. Michigan and I believe Wisconsin yes. have uh, had similar cases. Uh, and for different reasons, they rejected the petition to disqualify uh, Donald Trump from the ballot. Uh, and and it, it gets to these issues as to whether or not he actually engaged in an insurrection. Uh, it's a subjective standard, and I think the U.S. Supreme Court will, will treat it as such. Maria? Um, talk a little bit, very briefly, Joe, about the reaction, um, specifically by the other Republican candidates. Surprising, not surprising, um, what? Uh, well, not surprising, Maria, because uh, to this point in time, they have tried to walk that thin line right. uh, between running against Donald Trump, but yet not, uh, not attacking him, not taking him head on. Uh, and I think through the form, they came out and said, this is not the correct decision. Let the voters decide. But, uh, you know, you could, you could argue that they're not doing a, a very good case of convincing voters when they won't take them on head on. And uh, that's the dilemma that they have faced throughout. I gotcha. thought uh, Ramaswamy offered to take yeah. his name off the ballot if uh, Trump wasn't on there. And I think the answer to that was his name's on the ballot. Uh, I, I think this guy's giving himself way too much credit. Yeah. And if his nose was any further up Trump's butt, it'd be coming out his ear. Uh, that, that was the most self-serving suck-up line that he caught, put a, could have possibly released, and he did it. But the other one, the other candidate, I thought, gave a more telling comment was Chris Christie. Yes, mm. Christie and, was the one with credibility. Yeah, that's Ramaswamy's said, a suck-up. Yeah, yeah, but Christie, in effect, said it should not be a, a legal issue. It should be a voters, voter issue. Yeah. And, and well, it, ahead, the interesting dynamic here is that uh, and there's some commentators this morning who were uh, discussing this. Look, this petition was filed by Republicans and it was Republican conservative commentators and and uh, people from academia who first came up with this notion that Trump would be disqualified under Section three of the 14th Amendment. Uh, so some are arguing look, <clears throat> if. There's enough Republicans who think that Donald Trump is going to lose and we don't want to lose the next election. Here's the opportunity to bury him, to get him out of the race. Uh, but I don't see the Supreme Court feeling there's enough support from the Republican side to do such a political thing. Yeah, to pick up on your point, I believe the plaintiffs, there were seven Republicans and one independent, but no Democrats party of this uh, lawsuit. Joe, we, we, right. we live in the real world. There's the academic world. There's the real world. In the academic world, there's an argument to be made uh, with the Constitution as to the Supreme Court's decision on whether or not Trump will remain on or off the ballot. In the real world, we have a 6-3 conservative majority on the Supreme Court. There's no chance that they're not going to overturn this. If this was a Supreme Court that was majority appointed by Biden and Obama, I could see that there could be a case where they would keep him off. I don't see this 6-3 Supreme Court, maybe going 5-4, but I don't see them voting to keep Trump off the ballot. Joe, how, uh, excuse me, Rob, uh, quick related to that. Uh, uh, Smith uh, has also filed a suit, Supreme Court, for uh, insurrection. Are these two, how do they play together? Well, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, Jack Smith, who's the, uh, the special prosecutor, uh, has a case going up uh, before the Supreme Court. Now, his issue has to do with presidential immunity and whether or not the president in, in his office would be immune from the kind of charges that Jack Smith is pursuing in, in his case. And, and so that is up before the Supreme Court 
as is the Georgia election case in terms of of uh, jurisdiction. Uh, and now we got this, uh, con- which undoubtedly is going to end up in front of the Supreme Court and quickly. So <laughs> the Supreme Court is going to have a, a quite a full docket just handling the cases involving Donald Trump and the various uh, charges levied against him, both civilly, which is what this one in Colorado is, and also criminally in the other jurisdictions, including Jack Smith. Bundled together, or each one of them going to have to be analyzed and addressed separately? Oh, no, they, they all present uh, separate uh, arguments regarding uh, legal arguments regarding uh, the office of the presidency. Uh, the Colorado case has to do with qualification for an upcoming election, whereas uh, Jack Smith's case has to do with the immunities looking back at the activities alleged to, uh, against Donald Trump uh, when he was still president in 2020. So uh, one is backward looking, one is forward looking. Joe, a minute left here. Final thoughts on you, and I guess we'll get into this more on the Friday show in a couple of days, but go right ahead, sir. Well, I I credit Bill Stubblefield. He raised this issue for the Friday Five show uh, two months ago when he asked whether this Colorado case had legs, and here we are. Um, it's It's a momentous decision. It's one to take seriously because we've never had a, a, an ex-president in this position where he's uh, having to defend himself regarding activities that could arguably be labeled as insurrection or rebellious. Uh, but I think the U.S. Supreme Court ultimately will, will address this in a way that avoids the complications from this kind of decision affecting other individuals, other races, uh, from here on. So I, I, it'll be a political decision by the U.S. Supreme Court, but one I think we can reasonably expect, Rob, to be along that 6-3, 5-4 uh, uh, kind of margin. On that note, Joe, thank you very much for your time. $100 bill. And Maria, thank you for yours. <laughs> Absolutely. Enjoy the cheesecake and the leftover rum balls. The Dave Ramsey Show is next. This is Talk Radio, WRNR Martinsburg and TV 10. And we'll talk to you again in 22 short hours.